Welcome, Welcome to, to Don't, Don't Overspill. Spill. I'm Haley. I'm Madison. And we're back to spill all the tea. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I must stop that one. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, like we normally start out the show, we're going to play a game. This game is called Two Truths and a Lie. Probably very familiar with it. Let's see how well we know each other. All right. I have a dog. I love pickles. My favorite animal is a monkey. You hate pickles. I do hate pickles. I really hate pickles. They're the worst thing that ever happened to humanity. (laughs) I love pickles. Hate pickles. Hate them. That was an easy one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a twin. I took modeling classes. I went skydiving. You took model. Uh, you didn't take modeling classes. Correct. I know you went skydiving because I've called you crazy for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I sleep with my socks on. Sushi is my favorite food. My favorite movie is The Lion King. Sushi is not your favorite food. It is not my favorite food. These I are so easy. Sushi. You don't like food. They, no, they get, they get better. Okay. But okay. I do sleep with my socks on and people find that very weird. Hmm, I don't think you're going to. So do I. Some, I. Sometimes, but sometimes they just they end up getting off in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I could go to sleep with them on. Yeah, if I like pass out. I don't think you're gonna know the answer to this. Ready? All right. I played basketball. I played field hockey. I was a gymnast. You definitely didn't play basketball. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't see you playing basketball. I feel like you did gymnastics. I feel like you played field, ho- field hockey. Uh-huh. Was that right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I was debating. I, I knew the gymnastics one was true. I was like debating between the basketball and the field hockey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can sing. I can play piano. English was my best subject. You can't sing. I can sing. What? Yeah. I cannot play piano, but I can sing. Sing. No. (laughs) Absolutely not. Prove it. (laughs) Okay. I love Marvel movies. I'm an ant, and I would choose veggies over french fries. You hate Marvel movies. (laughs) You hate them. As soon as you said the word Marvel, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's it. (laughs) Oh, God. Every time. Uh, um, Yeah, I hate Marvel movies. I hate movies. I love Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. If I have to sit and watch a movie, I'd rather, I'd I'd hope it's a Marvel movie. It's so fake. (laughs) All right. I'm really bad at math. My favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. My favorite drink is Diet Coke. You're bad at math. I'm very bad at math. That's the that's lie. No, that's the truth. Wait, what? My favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. Yeah, and that's the lie. Yes. My favorite ice cream Coffee. flavor. Yes. <laughs> we do know each other. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, tacos is my favorite food. I've never been on a roller coaster, and my shoe size is eight. You love tacos. Mm-hmm. You've definitely been on a roller coaster, so I'm going to go with the shoe size is the lie. No, I've never been on a roller coaster. Wait. <laughs> yeah, so that's not, that's a lie. Oh, wait. Wait. No, I've never been on a roller coaster. Oh, the, oh then that's the lie. You yeah. have been on a roller coaster. I was coaster. like, I think I said that right. <laughs> I, I must have interpreted it wrong. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. <clears throat> I like waffles over pancakes. I like my eggs over easy. I can whistle. Waffle over pancakes, eggs over. Say them again. I like waffles over pancakes. Mm-hmm. I like my eggs over easy. Okay, you definitely don't like your eggs over easy. <laughs> I like them scrambled. <laughs> yeah, you, if I don't like the um, yolk, the yolk. Yeah. Mm. I see people like like the, and they dip the toast in yeah, it. And I'm that like, probably grosses you. Yeah, disgusting. Exactly. Excuse me out. Ew. I, I literally know you so well. <laughs> I used to be deathly afraid of spiders. I used to be deathly afraid of heights. I used to be deathly afraid of elevators. You're deathly afraid of elevators. Uh huh. I don't think you have a problem with heights. That's a lie. No. No. You just said the lie. Yeah. You're, you're not afraid of heights. Oh, what? Say it again. <laughs> Is it this hard or are we just like? <laughs> so I used to be deathly afraid of spiders. I used to be deathly afraid of heights. I used to be deathly afraid of elevators. Yeah, I don't think you were ever afraid of heights. So I think that's a lie. 
No. So what were you afraid of? Elevators. Yeah. You said I used to be afraid of elevators. Which is true, <laughs> right? <laughs> Am I like not hearing this right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, I used to. You said I used to be deadly afraid of elevators. That's true, right? Mm -hmm. You used to be deadly afraid of spiders. That's true. No. Oh, so then that's the lie. You, never, you were no. never afraid of spiders. But I was never afraid of heights either. Oh, I did so too. They're both lies. <laughs> I did two lies. <laughs> Like, there's no way I was doing that that wrong. <laughs> okay, next segment. <laughs> so, that was two truths and a lie, or um, two lies and a truth, <laughs> if you're Madison. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so next, we are going to share with you some of our biggest pet peeves, and we also asked some of our friends in the community what their biggest pet peeves are, and this is what we got. Okay. People chewing loudly with or with their mouth open. Ugh. Top five cringiest things yes. ever. Ever. If you're, like, smacking on, like, pasta, but, like, no one wants to... Like, no. It sounds gross. You look gross. Yeah, it's not attractive. It's rude. It's funny, though, because people think I chew very loudly, but it's my jaw. Mm. I have, like, my jaw cracks. So, like... People think when they first like eat around me that it's think it's they think it's me chewing, but it's my jaw cracking. Mm -hmm. My mom can manage to make eating a banana sound like eating a pretzel. So, uh, I how know. some people just just the way they ch I don't know it's just so loud. Interesting. Um, using blinkers. It's literally my biggest pet peeve because you're literally going to cause an accident. It is so yes. simple. The amount of people that just move over without a like. If I saw your blinker, I would have time to slow down yeah. and let you in. Yeah. But then you have to slam on your brakes. I even use my blinker when I'm pulling into my driveway. I do too sometimes. I live in a development. Even if there's no one around me. There's nothing. It's Not just even. like out of habit. Like you're just supposed to do it. Yeah. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And you don't have to move. Did it? Yeah. Like, right like that. Yeah. It's, like kind that. Of, it's kind of fun. To use your blinker. <laughs> it's fun to use your blinker. It's fun. Change up a little something while you're driving. Mm-hmm. So use your freaking blinker. God. People who walk slowly. Oh, my gosh. When people know that you're behind them. Yes. And they still take their sweet old time. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when families are together in the mall. And, and they, they literally take, take up, up the, the whole. Yes. Yes. And it's then, so annoying. Yes. And they walk so so slow. slow. And then they make you, like, feel bad for walking around them as if they weren't going, like, two miles yeah. an hour. Yeah. I just can't stand, like, walk with a purpose. Yeah. You have to. Be, you have to be going somewhere. Or Why when they're, you, you or, know? or when they're walking and they stop just in the middle of yes. Of and the when way. they're on their phones, they'll be walking. Then they just they just stop. Yeah, they and just you're stop. like, okay, hi. Nobody's behind you or anything. You're not in public. It's so rude. Like, come on. Oh. Um. Toilet seat up. It's just, just it's just a courtesy. It's just, it's just men. Just put it down. <laughs> it's my boyfriend. <laughs> it's my biggest pet peeve. I literally say, just put. The toilet seat down. Just down. Just put it down. Really quick. I'm not asking you to clean it. Yeah. Scrub it. It takes just as much time as it does to flush the toilet. <laughs> so flush the toilet and then put the seat down. Yeah. Hello? Why don't people do that? I don't know. I feel like it, either you're just purposely leaving it up because you don't care or it just really slips your mind that quick. I really think it slips people's minds. Yeah. But like I know multiple people who do it. Mm -hmm. But they just don't, and like they know that their significant others get mad, and they just still continue to do it. Maybe he likes making you mad. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not even talking about me in general, because we don't even live together yet. So I can't even imagine. Oh, my God. How many times I'm going to yell at him when we live together. Put like a little sign over the toilet. Yeah. Like put, put the seat down. I'm going to leave a $100 bill on top of the toilet seat. <laughs> so every time he shuts it, Get he gets rewards. <laughs> I'm going to see how long that dollar bill a hundred dollar bill stays there. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, leaving cabinets open. My mom does that all the time. This she'll one, go, this grab one doesn't a fork bother me. Or like grab a plate out of the cabinet and like she'll just turn around and start putting the food 
and then walk away. And, and the cabinet is still mm. open. Why? Just close it from behind you mm. after grabbing something. I don't get why people leave the cabinets open. Like, are you going back in there for something? Yeah. If not, close it. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. I mean, I don't really witness that a lot, but if I do, I don't think it would bother me that much. It just, it bothers me because it just, it's such a sore thumb. Yeah. Like it just sticks out. Like you walk in the kitchen, the first thing you're looking at is the open cabinet. You're right. You're right. There's OCD yeah. too. It's just not fun. Nope. Leaving lights on. This bothers me. That's going to raise your electric bill. Yeah. I never understood when I was younger, my grandpa would come in the room and be like, who's watching the TV in there? And we're like, nobody. He's like, then why is it on? Yeah. Like, leave a lamp on, like, something. But Good like, night light. But, like... My thing when I was younger, I would always use the bathroom, and I wouldn't... I would walk out and not turn the light off. I don't know why. Oh, no. I don't know why. You know what else is a pet peeve? Is when you don't leave a light on, when you leave for the night, and you have a dog. Yes! Yes! How can you leave your dogs... I always leave, like, the TV on for my dog. Like, I'll leave, like, yeah. a lamp or something on. How do you just have your dog in the pitch dark? Yeah, that's a pet peeve of mine. Like, you can't just walk in, and you're, it's pitch dark, and then... You know, mm -hmm. your dog's just chilling there. Yep. Poor, don't do that. That's another pet peeve. Turn them off. Turn them on sometimes. <laughs> um, hair on the shower wall. Top, like, one of the most disgusting things disgusting. ever. Disgusting. Disgusting. It's just like, why? Nobody wants to shower with your hair. <laughs> Gross hair on the wall. It's on the wall. It's in the drain. It's all over the... Ew. Just clean it. Yeah. Disgusting. Just don't do it. What's the point? I literally don't get it. I literally just go like this? Yeah, some people, because they don't want it going down the drain and like clop, but then like get a net. Get like a drain catcher and then pull it out and you'll have all the hair in there and you can just throw it out. I don't have that problem. I have very short hair. <laughs> um, having to repeat myself. That's frustrating. Mm -hmm. It depends on the situation. Like, if I say something once and you genuinely didn't hear me, yeah. okay. But if I'm on my third time saying something and you're still not either A, hearing me, B, understanding what I'm saying. Especially, like, if you're it. on your phone and, like, yes. then I'm having to re repeat myself multiple times, then it's, like, goodbye. Yeah, if you like chose not, not to listen to me, yeah. I'm not repeating myself. No, exactly. My breath is precious. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not saying it again. Nope. Should have listened the first time. Um, people who can't spell or use proper grammar. Oh my God, grammar bothers me so much. The people that use like Y O U R instead of Y O U apostrophe R E. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. No. And the thing is, though, too, especially over text, there's spell check, mm -hmm. spell check, grammar check. There's everything check. Yeah. How do you still not know how to spell? Yeah. Because people are so used to texting. Yeah. And that, so when they email, they just email like that. So. Mm hmm. So, I don't know. And it's not like you guys are, can't spell big words. It's like, like the common words. Like, yeah. I, what did someone say? The difference between lose and loose? Oh, yeah. Like, waste and, like, like. My biggest pet peeve is the misuse of there. All three <laughs> verbs, like, there over there. Mm -hmm. Their possession, like, that's theirs. <laughs> There's three different English ways. English lesson from They mailing. all mean three different things. Yeah. Like, they, apostrophe R-E, is they are. Mm -hmm. It's called a conjunction. Take notes. Take notes. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of your big pet peeves? My biggest pet peeve in the whole entire world is people being late. Being late. It's You're home. such a on time. I like to call myself an attendance freak. Um, it's just something... Some people hate that about me. Most mm -hmm. people hate that about me, honestly. But it's just how I grew up. Um, I could never miss school, no matter what. I never wanted to miss school. Could never, if I was late to class, like, I, if I wasn't 10 minutes early, I was late. That was, like, basically my mindset. Um, I'm, uh, my first college class ever, I was late because I was with my first professor a little after class. I ran, ran, and I fell up the stairs. Oh, my God. Thank God nobody saw me, but I was running like an idiot because I was going to be late. In high school, every day I showed up like 10 to 15 minutes late, like walking oh, in with no, my no. Starbucks. No, no, <laughs> Who the no. hell did I think I was? No. They started in high school. They started giving detentions for being late. So you had to yeah, be in homeroom before the bell, before we started morning prayer, 
or else you were considered late. And if you walked in during prayer, you had to just stand there and wait till the prayer was over. Like yeah. they wouldn't let you walk to class during the prayer. Like you had to stop. Yeah, as they should, there. because at that point you're disrespecting your teacher. Yes. In my opinion, like it's just frustrating because why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? There's no reason to be late. You have a time, you know about it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Just prepare yourself. And my, another biggest pet peeve is when people are late for their own gathering. Oh my God, no, that's annoying. That's annoying. My aunt was late to my baptism and she lived across the street. Why? How? How? I don't know. I don't, I literally <laughs> just like, if I get, I don't know. I'm just there on time always. So then you're making me wait. Right. Right. I don't know. I hate when people are late for like appointments. Oh, that bothers me. Like if you're late for like a hair appointment, like that pushes back the person's day. So like yeah. if I'm, I once referred a friend to my hairstylist, she was over three hours late for her appointment. Her appointment was at nine. She didn't call my hairdresser until 1130. So they ended up having to switch us. So I went in the morning, luckily, like I had nothing to do. So she called me at 830 and was like, I haven't heard from your friend. So I went in and lo and behold, she's in the middle of doing my hair. And she's like, your friend just texted me. I was like, uh, she would never, I was so taken. embarrassed. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. I'm referring you to yeah. this person. Like she's not easy to book with either. Like yeah, looks, she gets very, very booked. It looks bad on you. It's very bad on me. Like yes, when you're late and you make someone else look bad too. Yeah, no, exactly. Like people don't realize you're like you, you affect other people too yeah. when you're late. If you're late to the doctor and the doctor is now going to be late to see his next patient because he has to talk to you. When I worked at a spa, if you were late, we took it out of your time. Like you're not getting your full hour. You come mm -hmm. at a half hour late, you're still paying for the hour. We're just going to give you a half hour because you chose to be late. Yeah. That's another thing. I used to be an ABA therapist and I would only get paid if I saw the client. So one time I literally drove to the uh, building, like the location the office and I, that was my only client for the day drove 25 minutes there and my client never showed up never no, called me no shows are a big thing and, for didn't, and I didn't get paid for it that's ridiculous so it's like like come on that's like, the same thing just with tell us like t tell the person you're not coming like yeah. it's one thing if you're like if you're running late something like nothing I got nothing no shows I feel like no shows are even more disrespectful than being oh, late yeah like how do you just not call yeah. Like for stuff like a salon, a spa, like mm -hmm. a, an appointment for therapy, like you, Something. That, that's not like, that could have been someone else's it's time someone slot. Else's time. And that's why like when I worked at the spa too, if you didn't show up, we still charged you 50% of the service because we have to pay the therapists. They yeah. only get paid if you come in and get a massage. Yeah. You're ruining everybody else's time and day. Exactly. Like when we were selling my um, house two years ago, we would, you know, have showings and people would sign up for a showing. And people, like, I don't think people understand, like, how much goes into a showing. Like, it's not like an uh, open house. So showings happen once in a while yeah. or whenever they book it. So before a showing, we have to, you know, like, clean the house dramatically, have everything clean, do all this. Like, make sure to, like, take care of the dog because we don't want the dog in the house. Like, we yeah. had to do a bunch of things. And, like, twice, I think, that people just never showed up. And, so like, disrespectful. Just, yeah, like, they don't realize the amount of things that go in. Like, one time I had to leave work early to go home for a showing, and they didn't show up. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just. They, You're like, it's like ghosting in mm -hmm. a way. Like you're ghosting people. <laughs> yeah. Just people not caring. Yeah. Just disrespectful. Lack of courtesy. Yeah. But yeah, and this all goes back to me being on time because <laughs> just be on time, show up to things when, you're, when you tell people you're going to show up. And yeah. it's that simple. It's very simple. Or communicate if you can't show up. Yeah. Things come up, you know. Oh, exactly. Things got happen. a car accident. Your dog died, and I don't know whatever <laughs> or happens. You just simply don't want to yeah. anymore. It's fine. Just tell people. Communication mm -hmm. is the key, key to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My biggest pet peeve is when people do not hold the door open for you. Oh. So if I'm walking directly behind somebody and it's a reflecting door, so like you can see me behind you, you just let the door go. Yeah. It, it, it could hit me in the face, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, if I'm like across the parking lot, I don't expect you to hold the door open for me. I'm not going to run my way across to, you know. Yeah. If I am right behind you, just hold it. Yeah. It's an extra two seconds. I promise I'll say thank you. That's another one. When you hold the door open for somebody and, and they, they don't, don't say, say thank, thank you. you. Oh, my God. Okay, I didn't have to do it for you. But like I did because it's the nice and right thing to do. You can at least thank me. 
They just go about their day. Yeah. Like, oh, I almost just smacked you in the face, but, like, it's fine. I said something once to one girl. I was walking right behind her, and I didn't think she could hear me. Like, I said it, like, low, but I guess she heard me. <laughs> and I'm walking behind her, and she just lets the door go. I was like, okay. Like, I guess she didn't see me. And she was like, oh, sorry. Like, I actually didn't see you. And I'm like, really? Because I can see your reflection in the door. So you can see my reflection. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. Exactly. Uh, or, like, when you're, like, like you literally bump into that person. Like, you guys are going into the door at the same time, basically, and they still don't hold it for yep. you. Yep. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. So disrespectful. It's another big pet peeve of mine. Um, she was a lot. I do. Oh, this was a good one. When people try to get into the exit lane at the last minute, like you're four lanes over to the mm -hmm. left, and then your mm -hmm. exit's coming up, and you just jersey shuffle all the way shuffle. into the right lane because your exit's coming up in 0 0.2 miles. Yeah. Either you know where you're going and don't have a map on, so you know where the exit is, or you have a map on telling you that there's 0.2 miles from the exit. Yeah. Get so over. Something else with driving, my biggest pet peeve, is that when there's no cars behind me, but you cut me off, and then you go 20 miles below the speed limit. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Yes. I, I don't will, get If you're going to cut me off, you better be flying, barreling down the highway. Because you bet your ass I will be riding your ass oh, until 100%. you move over Flashing or go you. faster. Yep. If you do something like that. Mm-hmm. 100%. happens very often here in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. If you couldn't tell. Nobody has patience. They just want to go, but don't actually want to go. No. There's no courtesy ever of driving. Yeah. Like, the amount of times I've almost been run off the road by an 18-wheeler, because they just, they just don't care. They think they can intimidate you, but they can't. No. So stop trying to do that, 18-wheeler drivers. Nope. I hate, I hate it. And the thing about truck drivers is that you have to take a special test to be a truck driver. It's not just like a normal license where like, oh, you could have, you know, finagled your way and gotten your license, you know? Yeah. You have to take a special CDL test and you still can't drive. I don't get it. I don't get it. They it's just want to scare you off the road. Oh, yeah. It's another big pet peeve. Um, I just had another driving one. <laughs> driving. So I'll drive. Just driving, driving in Jersey. Um... Oh my God, this is a big one and I hate it. When you're on the main road, so like you have the right of way, whatever, and someone's like inching out to turn, but they wait until you get closer to turn. It's like, why didn't you turn when I was all the way back here? Yeah. Like 400 feet away from you. You wait as I'm approaching and then you're going to cut me. Like, what? Or when they- You saw me all the way back there, <laughs> 400 feet. Behind you, and now you're going to wait till I'm like 150 feet yeah. away from you and you're going to jerk it? Like mm -hmm. what? That. Hey, or like that. when they're just inching out and they're not going to go, but they're just like all the way out. Yes. It's like, just go. You're in the middle yeah. of the road already. Yeah. You're already causing traffic. Yeah. So like do something back up or just go. Traffic's a pet peeve too. What even is traffic? Why is there traffic? There is just no reason. drive. There is no reason. Unless there's an accident and something genuinely blocking from you from moving. I yeah. hate when you're stuck in dead stop traffic. And then all of a sudden it's just like you fly gone. You look around, you're like, where, where did everybody go? Did everybody get off the same exit? Did I like miss the memo? I don't get it. If everyone drove the speed limit every day, we'd all get to where we needed to go 10 minutes faster. Oh yeah. Cause you got the people that are speeding, the people that are going way too slow. And then you got the people zooming in and out of traffic. Just wanna let you guys know, when you zoom in and out to avoid traffic, you are causing more traffic. Yeah. People have to slow down and let you in cause you're cutting everybody off. So you think you're going around traffic, making your day easy. You're actually pissing everybody off behind you. So if you are that asshole that moves like that in traffic, I hate you. I hate you very much. She has spoken. I've sp I hate driving. I hate driving. No, nobody knows how to drive. Not saying I'm like top tier driver, you know, not. I'm not, I'm not good. I'll admit that. But like, it's a little, it's a little thing. We just have road rage here in New road Jersey. Rage. You want to know what else bothers me? Oh, when else? people ask me to drive, get in my car, and then start telling me how to drive. <laughs> you, you should slow I, down. Oh, do you want to drive? No? Shut up. I don't do that in Haley's car. I just hold on to things. Hold on to the, the <laughs> what do they call it? The holy shit handle. <laughs> what? That's what they call the, the handles in the car. Oh. I call it the holy shit handle. Because like when you go, holy shit, like you grab it. I'm dead. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I, I just keep my silence. And I just hold on and I just... Think Pray for sweet, days. sweet life. <laughs> I'm like, please. That time, that was that truck's fault. 
stopped right in the middle of the road. New Jersey drivers also blame everybody else but themselves. It's true. It's true. See, but I can admit when things are my fault, you know? Yeah. I can for the most part. But yeah. Sometimes. Just hate driving. I hate it so much. Seriously, that's my biggest pet peeve is when people try to tell me how to drive in my own car. Yeah. And it's like, not you, always. you didn't offer to drive. You didn't want to drive. I offered to drive. Mm-hmm. You asked me to drive. Mm-hmm. I'll drive in circles if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Let me live. Yeah. So annoying. You, sh- you should be in that lane. Really? Okay. You drive. You yeah. be in that lane. I always get told how to drive. I always. do too. It's I, so annoying. I, I suck at driving. I literally suck. I know I suck. <laughs> I literally failed the driving test basically, but since I'm a twin, they passed me. They I only passed suck. you because you were a twin? Yes. Wow. I oh, I guess they didn't want to make you feel bad, like your twin. Want, yeah, she was a very nice lady. She didn't want to make me feel bad on my birthday with my twin sister. So they passed me. I hit the curb for my driver's test, and the guy let me try again. That, that was nice. Yeah, I hit the curb. I was speeding. You were speeding. How do you speed? They make you go like 10 miles an hour. Because who could go 10 miles per hour? <laughs> oh, I didn't even touch the gas. I was full on rolling on the brakes my entire driving test. No. I looked like every way like four times <laughs> it was tr- it took me the written test took me three times to pass really i got an 82 the first time so i passed by like you need an 80 you need an i 80. got 78 damn for me at school if you failed it more than four times you had to actually go to the dmv yeah so it. i got it on the third time wow i was like i'm not do- i'm not doing it again i'm not i'm, I'm not really doing not. it because i wasn't failing dramatically i was failing by two, two points. points yeah and that's like probably like, one question yes and i'm like some of them, like, the, the stuff questions. is so irrelevant. Like, what's the fine for speeding in a school zone? Like, how about just don't speed in a school zone? Like, why do I have to know how much I have to pay for it? <laughs> you know? Or well, when you're parking uphill, which way do you turn your wheels? I park on a hill all the time, and I never once <laughs> said, I have to turn my wheels to the right. No, I just park. That's a thing. Yes. If you're going up, you're supposed to turn them towards the curb. If you're going down, you're supposed to turn them away from the curb. On a hill, yeah. I got I that question right. This is why I failed. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's one of many, 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 many things that, <laughs> that bother us. That bother us. I could sit here all day mm-hmm. and talk about the things that I can't stand. But, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us for that segment. <laughs> Our next segment is our biggest blackout. <laughs> oh yes we all have those moments when you've had too much to drink and it just all comes out on the table mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. what is your biggest blackout moment like what was the worst time you ever dr- drank oh, God. the story still makes me like sick to my stomach so i was 19 years old and I went to Putacana with my sister and three friends I think three friends there was a few of us and we went to Putacana all-inclusive hotel whatever great great we got there and um our room wasn't ready for check-in I hate that it's the worst literally wasn't ready for check-in so we put our suitcases somewhere and they said just we got changed into our bathing suits we went to the pool worst mistake worst <laughs> mistake um so we're at the pool we f- i found some guys like who went to my school so you know it was a party before but now it's even more a party like you know just you know we're just drinking we're drinking and then you know, many, 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 many drinks later, I blacked out. I blacked out. To say the least. To say the least. I remember, the last thing I remember is just dancing with an old man on the patio. That's all I remember. I was, Maddie Daddy came out. She was dancing. She was, you know, twerking. And that's all I remember. So then I fell asleep. I fell asleep on the bench, and then some old man, a different old man, picked me up. Not the one you were dancing with. Not the one I was dancing different with. Different old man. Picked me up, and then he was like, you know, like, are you okay? And I literally don't remember anything, and like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I just told him to leave me there. 
So he left me there. I think I got up and I walked to buy the gym area. I remember, wait, I fell asleep on the grass. Um, I was on the grass. I woke up and I remember seeing grass and the gym. I saw the gym. So at this point, my sister's with me. My sister's like there in Putacana. My phone's missing. And I'm missing. <laughs> I'm missing. <laughs> my sister calls my mom. They got that bad. <laughs> my mom's at the dinner with her coworkers. Okay. She goes, Mom, Madison's missing. <laughs> and she's in her phone. <laughs> so now, now, my mother, you know. Oh, my God. Major panic attack is now looking up flights to Putacana in the middle of a restaurant, freaking out, panicking. I literally went missing, missing for oh hours. Oh, my God. Mind you, remind you, everybody, I didn't even check into the hotel yet. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, this is like day one of your trip, and your mom was like booking day flights. Day one. Day one. So then I, remember, I like, so then someone else, I think a worker came to me on the grass, and he was, he like got me up, and then he was like, like, you know, what's going on? And I was like, I, I don't know. I just remember going to the front desk and she was like where's your room and I literally said I, I don't know I literally had no idea you don't have a room yet I literally didn't have a room <laughs> thank god my friend found me um but then I remember just like I just remember having a vision of like seeing my mom on FaceTime like cursing me out oh my god she's like if you don't get your fucking shit to get like literally she was like I'm gonna send like I don't think she's ever yelled at me like that before wow so yeah now Still makes me sick to my stomach thinking about that because anything could have happened. I was going to say, like, oh, my, you're in Punta I'm Cana. I'm literally lucky to be alive. Um, don't ever do that. It was, like, the most stupidest thing I've ever done. My phone ended up being in some girl's purse. I also went up to the front desk and I said, where is my phone? <laughs> she was like, I, I said, like, I don't know. <laughs> I literally said, you better find my phone. I was Because I'm attached to my phone. I literally had a mental breakdown. Oh, my God. I said, if you don't find my phone right now, like, I literally was, like, threatening her. I somehow found my phone. The girl literally brought it to my door. Wow. But yeah, it was like it makes me sick to my stomach because, yeah, I was in Putacana all by myself in a bathing suit. And it, literally anything could have happened. Anything could have happened. Anything. So moral of the story, wait till at least <laughs> like your third day in Putacana yeah. to black out. Yeah, because yeah, literally like, the rest of the trip I was like sober. Like, you were probably traumatized. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, like, didn't even want to drink. Like, I drank, but, like, nothing. Oh, my God. Nothing. Like, I was just 19 years old, like, 19 years old, like, young, like, living my best life. I'm like, oh, like, I'm on vacation, and no. You just, wow. like, I just took full advantage of the open bar. Oh, and I would I do that too. way too often. Well, because you were, you were 19, so you weren't 21 yet. Yeah. So the fact that you were being ID'd, too. It's exciting. I would have been, I would have taken advantage of it, too. Exciting. Yeah. It's, like, so exciting. Like, yeah. You're there. You're like, I don't have to stop. I don't want to stop. Yeah, I'm not driving Why would anywhere. I stop? Yeah, it's all inclusive. Yeah. I'm not paying anything extra, whether I have five or 15. Yeah. And you know what? When it's all inclusive, I feel like it inclines you to drink more, though, because you want to get your money's worth. Oh, a thousand percent. Like, I'm not paying an extra $2,000 to have, like, two drinks a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're going big or going home. Wow. <laughs> it's my story. <laughs> Mine's not as interesting, but um, this was the first time like my dad like noticed I was drunk. So this was one of many times we broke into my friend's grandpa's house. He had like a really nice house. <laughs> oh. Man's was in Florida all the time with like his mistress person, whatever, you know. So we, the first couple times he like, he knew she was going to be there, but he didn't know about the parties. So a couple times we did break in. So... We're there in high school, no supervision, obviously. I was drunk. Like, we were doing, drinking Jaeger. Like, ew. Ew. Like, disgusting. Like, I can't, I think back to the way I used to drink, and I'm like, rum, Jaeger, beer. Yeah, we used to be savages. It's disgusting. I, I probably would have drank motor oil if you handed it to me and told me it was alcohol. So, ew. extremely intoxicated, and my dad was picking us up. So, I was with my friend and my sister and like a bunch of other of our friends, but in my car home was my sister and my friend. So we're driving home, my dad picks us up, and my sister can tell, like I'm wasted. Like there's no hiding when I'm drunk. Like the way I talk, the way, like how I get really annoying. So my sister was like, okay, don't say 
anything. Like just don't speak basically when we get in the car. So my dad comes, we get in the car and I'm sitting in the back and he's like, hey Haley. I sat there and said nothing. I was dead silent. And he's looking, he's like, how was the party? I said nothing. I sat there in silence like my sister told me to do. And my sister was like, say something. I was like, you told me not to. Like, I didn't know what to do. So the whole ride home, it's just dead silent. I'm trying to avoid speaking at all costs. And then we get home and my sister opens the van door. We were in a minivan at the time. Opens the minivan door. I go to step out. Flat on my face. <laughs> flat on my face in my driveway. My dad was like, what, what the hell's wrong with her? And my sister's like, I don't know. She's just really tired. And I, all I remember is my dad going, she's drunk, isn't she? She's drunk, isn't he? Isn't she? And I was like, oh, God. So the next thing I remember is my sister and my friend dragged me inside and left me on the kitchen floor, just like there to sleep. They went upstairs, you know, went about their night. And all I remember is hearing my mom, like in the distance. And she was like, why is Haley on the kitchen floor? And they were like, oh, she's drunk. And my mom was like, oh. Someone like move her, please. I was just in the middle of the kitchen floor. And yeah, my dad texted me the next day and was like, how you feeling? I was like, oh, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Two Lock. totally different parents. And my phone fell out of my pocket and I, it, was, it rained that next morning. So I couldn't find my phone. Same thing like you, I lost my phone, didn't know what to do. I was texting people like on Twitter, on my computer, cause I couldn't find my phone. And my one friend was like, did you check outside? I was like, no, like, why would it be outside? Like, that's stupid. There it was, right in the lawn, face down, soaked. It was done? Mm -hmm. Not that done, it lasted me another month. Like, I put it in rice, and it lasted another month. And then for my final exams, I turned it off, because you're supposed to turn your phones oh, off, yeah. and it never turned back on. Wow. Yep. That sucks. Yeah. It was the iPhone 5, I remember. <laughs> it was black. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I have so many blackout stories, but I don't think we have, oh my God, guys, I have so many. Like, I actually have so many. It's like actually disturbing how many times I blacked out. Disturbing. It was like a regular thing for me in high school. So regular. It was like every I, time you drank, you blacked out. Yeah. Actually, I could talk about my most recent one. Um, well, actually not my most recent one. <laughs> my birthday. My 25th birthday. Oh my God. Um... I, all I remember is just having two white claws. That's all I remember is just having two white claws. So I don't know how I blacked out after that, but I somehow did. Oh, my God. I'm convinced something else. I don't know. I literally have no idea if there was shots somewhere in the middle, but I don't remember anything. I just remember two white claws. And then all I, I remember, nothing. I, my night was from Snapchat and Instagram. Oh, my God. Um... But apparently, I cried the whole night. Shocking. Um, <laughs> I'm very emotional. We all know that. Oh I cried the whole night, well, half the night. Um, I was at a rooftop party for my birthday, and there was like 20 stairs. And this is when masks were mandatory. I fell all the way down the stairs, and my mask was on top of my face. <laughs> Went all the way to the bathroom like that somehow. Nobody fixed it not no one nobody oh my god um my mask was over my face my friends were there they're, they're telling me about this but nobody fixed it nobody they just That's let me nice. walk around like that so and then the icing on top is that i went home with my boyfriend just us two in an uber and i'm unconscious in the uber basically like not <laughs> awake i'm literally a mummy and he drags me out of the car, and he left his phone and his and my purse was in the car. So he he was like, he I guess he just like looked at me and like looked at everything and just like was like, she's fine. <laughs> so then let go of me to grab everything and I went. Bloop. Oh no! And I fell right on my ass, where my phone was, and somehow, like I said, I'm attached to my phone. Somehow, in the blackout, my instinct was to look at my phone, shattered everywhere. Oh, no. Everywhere. Um, I cried myself to sleep. In my, basically, I cried myself to sleep. Um, I never threw up a day in my life from drinking. I threw up the first time ever that next morning. 
I literally went to Verizon next morning and I said, can you fix this? <laughs> you help me. <laughs> and he goes, um, did someone run that over? I go, I fell on it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I get like really bad, really fast. Did something like because set you off to no. why you were upset? No. Weird. Like I've cried drunk, but like usually something like you remember what sparks it, even though if it's stupid, like you remember why you started crying. My, no, my, my sister told me that it was just because I, I said that nobody was there for me. <laughs> what? Because it was a part like, okay, so me and my sister are twins, obviously. So yeah. it's a party for my sister and I, so both of our friends were there, but like half of the, like half of them were Stevie's friends, you know, half of them were Bree's friends, my sister's friends. And then, you know, some were mine. So I guess drunk me was like, no one's here for me. Oh my God. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea what I was thinking. Do I care about it? No. All I cared about that there was part, people there partying and drinking, but no, my drunk ass had to cry and be emotional and shove french fries down my throat. I remember, just, I remember eating french fries. I broke my phone and I threw up for the first time and I lost my dignity all in one night. I literally was traumatized like for like at least a week after. Like I was like, Sounds like such a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. I think my problem is, is I always question why I black out so often. And I always say I'm never going to do that again. But like I could, I drink so much. Like, or like not so much. Like I'm, I'm not like that. Clearly I drink two White Claws. <laughs> but like I drink like three or four White Claws and I'm like, I'm fine. So yeah. like I think I could just keep going. And then it just like, I don't get drunk. I just black out. It hits you all at once. Yeah. yeah. So you're on like your fourth glass of wine and you're like, this is fine. And then you yeah. go on for five and six and then you're like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm drunk. After a few glasses, I'm like, I'm literally perfectly fine. Like mm -hmm. what is going on? I could just keep going. Yeah. So I instantly just skip the drunk part and go right to the blackout. Wow. So I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to debate which yeah. one to share. Like there's one, one's like... Oh, it's crossing the line, and there's one that's like... I literally was drunk in Putacana in yeah. a bathing suit on the floor. I don't think we'd get any worse than that. I mean, maybe. I blacked out, again, at my friend's grandfather's house. This was... <laughs> basically, we, we blacked out there a lot. Hi. And I thought it was... You know, just cute little old me. I thought it was a fun idea to invite three of the men I was talking to. At the, at all to the same party. Yes. One of them... <laughs> one of them was my ex... We were still like cool though. He's the ex that I don't hate. Oh, him, the kid that cheated on me in France was one of them before that. Uh. And then this other kid that was friends with like our friends. So here's how it kind of unfolded. So the three of them never knew each other were there, by the way. I managed to make sure none of the three of them ran into each other the whole night. That's number one, I have to take credit for that. So one of them, Fell out because his friend drank a whole bottle, not a whole bottle, like, like a good amount of a bottle of Svedka. Ew. Started seizing on the couch. Like, like seizing, throwing up, foaming at the mouth. He had to leave because he had to take his friend to the hospital. So, one, one down. Then there's two of them there. I thought everything was fine, you know, one corner. The other corner, upstairs, downstairs, you know, the whole thing. The party was big enough to where, like, they you know, know, no one would, it, it was, it, they would have had to just literally run into each other. Yeah. Then I just kept drinking and drinking until I woke up on the bathroom floor to both of them pulling me off the ground. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I cried to my ex-boyfriend and told him that I missed him. Yeah. So... That story is like painful. It was very painful. I was, it, it, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. Not the smartest thing. No, not at all. They weren't happy. <laughs> Clearly, like, why are you helping her? I don't know. Why are you helping her? They weren't happy and, at all. Yeah. I think the one kid knew who my ex was, but my ex didn't know who the new, like, the other kid was. You know what I mean? You but put yeah. yourself in a messy situation. A very messy situation. And the best part is I did it to myself. Like I didn't, they weren't just all conveniently at the same party. Like I texted all three of them and said, hey, there's a party, come. Like, really? You want to know what the best part is? The person I ended up with was the one that went home to take his friend to the ER. 
Oh. Like a few days later, like we were texting. Oh. And he's the one like I ended up like actually talking to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Very I woke up full of regret that next morning. My ex-boyfriend was texting me like, oh, are you okay? You told me you missed me last night. I was like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna hide. Uh, no, I don't miss those nights. I don't either. Oh my God, they make me so nauseous to think about. Oh. So thankful I have a boyfriend. Me too. Me too. Honestly. <laughs> High school Haley. Um, oh my. Ugh. Ratchet is the only word <laughs> I'll use. Ratchet. <laughs> oh my God. I should be put in jail. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh. <laughs> bad. So bad. Just like, I don't know. Just like hearing other girls too in their stories. Just like, just like drunk texting boys. And I'm like. It's a big mistake. You will regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah. The rest of your life. Yeah, so, like, if you're, like, single and, like, missing somebody, get drunk and, like, hide your phone. Hide your phone. Or let your friends take your phone. Something. something. Anything. You'll be... And then it gives them the upper hand. So, like, you know I'm drunk and sad and I miss you, so now you're going to take advantage of that. Oh, yeah. And play with my, my head, you know? Yeah. That's their favorite thing to do sometimes. Oh, yeah. So. Moral of the story. <laughs> Don't black out. Don't black out. See, now I'm at the point, though, where, like, I don't like getting to that point. Oh, I'm disgusted like, by it. Like, I hate when I realize how drunk I am. Yeah. And then you're like, how do I get sober? Like, that, I don't know. Like, I used to be able to feel completely drunk and blocked out and want to keep going. Now, like, I, I kind of realize, I'm like, okay, like, we're really drunk. I don't want to be like this anymore. Yeah. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy. I hate it. I actually hate it. Every time I get drunk and I, like, wake up and I'm like, why? 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 Like, I'm never doing this again. Nope. The headaches, the nausea. The... Everything. Just, like, the regret. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's just, like, I hate not remembering what I'm doing. Like, I hate it. I hate nothing. It's, so, like, that's the most embarrassing thing. It's just, like, waking up and not knowing what you did last yeah. night. Yeah. Like, you check your Snapchat and you see, like... Yeah. You're snapping people, and you're like, yeah. mm -hmm, what did I say? Who am I talking to? Yeah. Like, I hate being, like, somewhere and not knowing, like, what, like, who I talk to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, like, weird. It's just weird. It's the unknown. Like, you were there, but you weren't there. You weren't there. It's just weird. And other people saw you doing things that yeah. you have no idea that you did. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, it just sketches me out. I hate it. I stick to, like, blacking out in front of, like, my family now. So, like, at the holiday Christmas party, yeah, I'm blacked out. But, like, going out to, like, a bar or a club or something like that, I'll have a few drinks, but then, like, I just, I get, like, uncomfortable. I'm, like, I can't imagine myself being drunk anymore in, like, yeah. this situation and this setting. you have to, like, Uber home. Yeah. And, like, yeah, there's just people bumping into you. And just, yeah. Ugh. I hate being drunk in public. I think that's, that's the thing. I just hate being drunk. Like, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I know. I always tell myself, I'm, like, I don't need to drink. Like, I'll, I'll go and just chill. And then there I am, six glasses of wine later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once someone offers it, like, it's done. Oh, you can't say no. You can't. Have you ever turned down a glass of wine? No. And I don't think I ever will. That's the problem. You have to have will. You have to want to say no. I don't want to say no. I don't want to say no either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, don't black out. Don't text your ex. Don't text your ex. And don't black out in a foreign country. Be... <laughs> Be safe out there. It's wild out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. So this is our friend, Albert, who's going to be joining us for a fun segment called Let's Debate About It. Woo! Hello, everybody. <laughs> Excited to be on this podcast. <laughs> it's an honor to have you, Albert. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're <laughs> going we're gonna to debate some fun topics. Albert actually came up with these topics, so... That's why we're forcing him to debate them with us. <laughs> awesome. All right. So the first topic we're going to debate is homework necessary for kids. No. No. I don't think so at all. I, I think it is. I mean, okay. why do you guys not think homework is not necessary? I think it just adds stress to kids. I think you're putting them in school for eight hours a day. I think there's enough time in school to learn the lessons and they should have free time at home. They should be able to hang out with their friends, see their families. 
maybe they have an extra maybe they have an extracurricular that's really important to them. Like for me, I danced my whole life. Mm -hmm. So when I came home at 11 o'clock at night from dance and my homework still wasn't done, it, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. And it's like the teachers would get mad at you and be like, well, homework comes first. And I'm like, for me, it doesn't. Like I show up to school, I'm a good student, I do good on my tests. If I'm at dance class till 11 at night and I didn't do my homework, yeah, tough. You, you signed up for dance class, that's a priority of yours. Yeah. And then also, it also weighs on the parents, I think, homework. Yes. Um, the student, like the parents want to help their children and so they do it for them and the children ask for their help. So it's also just a stress, what? stress for their parents. I'm telling you, the, the day my kids come to me with like, can you help me with this algebra homework? I, no. I, I think for me, it's repetition. I know, I know playing baseball, playing sports. I mean, the, the biggest thing is repetition. I don't think homework should be long, but I do think there should be, whether it's 45 minutes or an hour for the kids to touch, you know, hit some touch points on whatever they spoke about in class. Um, that's why I think it's still necessary. Um, and then for me, I've seen my mom, she, uh, she actually learned English through homework. Oh, that's um, interesting. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, my mom was from uh, Lebanon and she came here in 1985. Oh. I was born in 87, so she actually learned English through our homework. So That's wow. interesting. Mm -hmm. But that's another thing. Like, th like, they have a certain curriculum of how many hours students should be working on homework. So I think that is a bunch of bullshit, honestly. Yeah, they say, like, oh, they should have at least two to three hours of homework. If it's, like, educational stuff, like, for example, I think, like, grammar and spelling, yeah. that stuff, like, go home and write the word three times. Try to find the mistakes. Like, those are things you're going to see on, like, SATs and stuff yeah. like that. But... Writing a five-page paper on George Washington, like, yeah, why? It's, it's just a bunch of like things that people, like the students, are just doing just, just to do. It's not educational at all. Yeah. And then also, I think having the curriculum is like forcing the teachers to just give the students more work that doesn't even need to be done. Yeah. And then they complain that they have to grade it. Yeah. And it's like, well, why'd you assign it? Exactly. And they can take their sweet time grading our tests and papers, mm -hmm. but we have deadlines. So why do, how are you gonna instill a deadline in the students when we don't get the grade back for a month? Yes. I, I think another topic we could hit on another time is, is some of the stuff that they're teaching us, do we even need to know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. only are we doing it at home for homework, but <laughs> do we even need to like, um, I, I mean. Just, Algebra. Yeah, Geometry, I mean, yes, y math. Y equals mx plus b. I haven't had to use that yet. No. After no. graduating. No. I, I didn't even use it in, like I did it in school, but did I ever need it? No. no. Am I a math major? No. I think if they need to start letting, because I get it like you're too young to know what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. I think they should let you take things that interest you too. Exactly. Like, I knew my whole life I was going to do absolutely nothing involving math. I should have been able to take an extra English course if I wanted to and get mm -hmm. better in that. Mm -hmm. You know? I think also it, it depends on maybe on the, like, what we're talking about for homework. So I think a first grader, second grader, yeah, they should right. be getting drilled in their head, cat, dog, yes, how to spell. Yes, that's what I like, the spelling. That's the, repetition. But then right. there comes a point when you're in middle school and your, your history teacher who, he doesn't give a shit. He's just, he has a curriculum he has to hit and he tells you, read these four chapters and then answer the four questions after. And nobody yeah. reads the chapters. They no. just go find the answers. And that's the type of homework I think that got to be worked yeah. on. Because it's not teaching anything. It's, it, you know what it's teaching me to do is to take the easy way out exactly. and cheat. I'm, I don't want to read four chapters. I just sat through an hour and a half of you reading chapters today. So what am I going to do? I'm going to either Google it, mm -hmm. I'm going to spark note it, yep. or I'm just going to go notes. to the, sometimes spark even in the books, if mm -hmm. you go to the back of the book yeah. for like the lesson, it tells you the answers yeah. of all the questions. Exactly. How do you, like, really? Exactly. <laughs> I think it just depends on like what age you are and like the type of homework you should be getting. Right. But like, yeah, nowadays they're giving kindergartners like, you know, like a crazy, like first graders, like crazy amount of homework. Yeah. And it's so it's, different from when we were kids, but. Not only that, with obesity rates, the skyrocketing the way that they are too. I, I mean, I don't know the, the schedule now for kids. I think they get home around three o'clock, two thirty, three. Mm -hmm. Especially here in New York, New Jersey, I mean, in, in the winter time and in, in the fall, it gets dark around 6 o'clock sometimes, 6.30. So these kids have a three-hour gap to go play outside, and these teachers are drilling them with homework yeah. Yeah. that need to be get done at a certain time. So, I mean, I, I personally think it contributes to uh, obesity as well. 
Yeah. If they're not getting Over. outside. I know that's not. a little crazy stance, but I'm going to stick but to it. I mean, th that's true. It can be true. They don't have any time to go outside and be a kid. Yeah. Right. Even, even on winter breaks, I have a phone to pick yes. with teachers that assign homework and like t papers and projects during break. It's called a break. Yeah, summer break, you have the reading log. Yes, winter, you have a paper. Mm -hmm. What's the point? I still yeah. have to, th that's because that's all I'm thinking about. I'm at Christmas with my family, but I'm thinking about that five yeah. page paper I still have to do. Yeah, and not for nothing, if your parents want you to do stuff over the summer, they'll do it. Like, yeah. they'll tell you what to do, but like, you shouldn't force it on a student. So when is homework acceptable? At what age do you guys think homework is acceptable? College? Uh, yeah, I think college is appropriate, but again, the amount of bullshit assignments I had to do was... Yeah. I think college is a little more appropriate because that's kind of where you go to do what you want to do for the rest yeah. of your life. So if I want to be a psychologist and I have psychology homework, I'm not mm -hmm. going to be mad at that. But when I was taking my gen eds and I was trying to focus on my psych classes and I had English papers to write, yeah. I was like, come on. Like yeah. that, that to me, that's, that's not. Exactly. That's not like worth it. That's just wasting my time. Mm -hmm. Depends on the class again. Yeah. And when you're young too, like, like you said, when is it appropriate? I think when you're in those very crucial like learning stages, mm -hmm. you need to learn to spell, you need to learn grammar, you need to learn basic math, like adding and subtracting, but not like two hours worth of homework, no. like assign maybe like a worksheet yeah. and just, they do it really quick and then they bring it in. And I hate how homework counts so much towards your grade. Yeah. Like the fact that I missed a paper and failed a test shouldn't be on the same level. Like my grade shouldn't go down that much for missing one paper. Mm -hmm. So ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could ramble on this a while. Yeah, but, uh, we'll be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't think homework should be mandatory. No. I, I think it, sh it shouldn't be mandatory, but I think there should be just different rules to homework. Yeah, you, a balance. Gotta, a balance, yeah. correct. Definitely a balance. Especially if you play sports too, and yeah. the, you yeah. got a three, you have practice till 435. Some people have jobs. They start having yeah. their job junior year, that senior too. year. Yeah. Um, I had to quit uh, field hockey in high school because I got a job. I couldn't balance everything. So on top of that, I had to do homework and it's just too much for a young person to yeah. handle, honestly. All right. Next question. Next, we are going to talk about is Barbie a good role model for kids? Again, no. Not really. Uh, why not? <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I don't see the problem with Barbie being a bad role model. I mean. No, I don't have that body. I don't have that perfect skin. Yeah, I don't have those lips and those. She's tall, she's skinny. Yeah. Her hair is, her thighs don't touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, wait, but when you're. <laughs> When you're four years old, you're not thinking about her thighs touching. No, right. you're right. You're not thinking about her, her lips that are injected with Botox. No, but I, I don't think. You know, that's, you, you're not <laughs> I'm at thinking, that stage. I'm thinking she's so pretty and like, you know, like when you're younger, you, you, you don't think you're that pretty. Well, Ken too, Ken's a handsome guy, but when, when you're playing with him, you're just, you're too young to realize, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get like, what I get what you're saying. Like now that I'm thinking back of playing with a Barbie, I wasn't like, God, I wish I looked like her. But yeah, it's it's as you get older too. Like not that I still play with Barbies, but like <laughs> if you put a Barbie doll in front of my face, like I'll probably be insecure. Like I don't yeah. want anything like that. Especially, no one does. Especially like the like obese kids. Like they're like probably like thinking like why can't I look like that? Like and like you do think when you're younger like I wish I was like pretty. I don't know. I get what you mean. Not like four, but like you, I still played just, with Barbies it, when I was like six. It just kind of gives like unrealistic expectations hopes. Yeah. and hopes like the Dis same thing with disney princesses and their yeah. hair i w one time i wanted my mom to do my hair like jasmine so bad yeah. it looked nothing like princess jasmine and i was so sad about it but rapunzel. it's like it, rapunzel it, it's just like these i don't think it's bad like i'm not gonna sit here and say take away barbie you know what i mean but like i don't know i definitely feel like, like well nowadays there's more but like back in the day like we didn't have like larger Barbies. You didn't have like different skin colored Barbies and stuff like yeah. that. It was just the one blonde, skinny, tall. And that's kind of like, as you get a little older, you think you're like, okay, well, is this like what the ideal woman is supposed to look like? Like everyone wants a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. 
No. And now the four-year-olds are like much more aware of what's going on in the world. And well, my, my question to you guys was, I mean, this is more up your guys' alley. I didn't play with Barbies when I was younger. <laughs> the What you is the age you think, what is the age for playing with Barbies, roughly? Uh, is it like three to five, three like to six? There's different I, stages of playing with Barbies. Yeah, like I had a dollhouse when I was like older, mm -hmm. like 10 maybe? Yeah. I think, I don't want to say, is that old? No. I think no. it was like older, I had like a dollhouse. Yeah. yeah, it was like probably like nine, 10 years old, I mm -hmm. asked for a dollhouse. So like, yeah, like two to 10. Yeah. I would say. Well, like a two-year-old playing with the Barbie is going to be much different than a 10-year-old. Yeah. Like the two-year-old's probably going to swing it around and like yeah, exactly. play and, with it. And when the, I was like, eight or nine like my barbies were like ken and barbie were dating like you know like no, i had exactly. like a whole exactly game. and i have a twin sister so we were the same age so like we as we got older our language you know built up so like we like played barbie together and we acted mm -hmm. out things and you know i don't know so like we were so slowly. is to sum this up i guess you guys are saying barbie is a it's not attainable it, 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 barbie is such a pretty doll that what should they play with like an ugly doll <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, what, play with a rag doll. What should we play? Like, are we gonna have Barbie in seventy-two different? I feel relations? like yeah. what the, I feel like what they're doing That's now is was the correct thing to do all along. Like, yeah. Just have different versions mm -hmm. of Barbie. If that makes so sense. So if you are um, Irish, you have to go buy the Irish Barbie. No, no, but just know that there's a Barbie out there like that. You can Got have it. a choice though, because like, what if you know? What if I don't want to play with a blonde, white, skinny Barbie? You know, what if I actually want like. A brown haired Barbie. Yeah, and like that's, they did end up making the Barbie, but her name wasn't Barbie. Her name yeah. was something else. Yeah. So it's like they ended up making more people to the story, but like she's, it's not considered a Barbie doll. You know what I mean? Interesting. I don't know how to, th I, yeah. I don't um. know. It's, it can go both ways. Like I don't think it's a bad, like I'm not saying like my kids can't play with Barbies. Like obviously no. you can, like don't take Barbie off the shelves. I just think it's important for, kids to understand when they can understand like this isn't I feel like she was also just perceived that way too like like she's the perfect perfect ideal look that you want and like you know I don't know yeah, where I'm going I, with I this. Think, I think Barbie I mean it's it's been going on for a long time I, I think Barbie is not the problem I think it's social media that's what i'm saying yeah uh, so they didn't make barbie set out to be like this is what you have to look like it's the people that ended up perceiving it that way and yeah made it a thing i guess now that we're older we have a different outlook on it Correct. yeah like you said like when we were younger we weren't thinking like that totally but I, I think barbie i mean this is my opinion i think barbie's fine up to the the girl that's playing with it till she's five six seven then all of a sudden her parents get her the iphone and she gets yeah. one little scroll, and mm -hmm. now, I mean, it's okay to post pictures in underwear if you're a female. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's encouraged. It's encouraged. I mean, with, uh, what do they call them, the mommy makeovers and, yeah. the, mm -hmm. and the implants. So, I mean, right there, that's... It's a whole new world we're living in. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. But I can't, I don't think we should be bashing Barbie. I don't think we can come after Barbie like this. <laughs> Barbie's a fan of Barbie. Wrong. Barbie. I love the Kelly wrong. dolls, the little, yeah. the little kid ones, the Kellys. Remember Bratz? Oh, don't even get me started on Bratz. I love. I don't know the Kelly dolls. They were like little, like Barbie's little kids. Never seen Kelly. No. no? Kelly's Dreamhouse. No. Interesting. No. That's the thing too. Is like, social media, kind of does the same thing we're saying Barbie does. It gives you these unrealistic goals because someone can go in and just edit their picture and make themselves look three sizes smaller than they actually are. Oh yeah. So. I think it's heavily debated about the, this Barbie topic, but I think when the girl gets to a certain age where she starts realizing like, wow, I kind of want to look like, I don't know, I think they're done with the Barbie stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, when they get to that point. But let them be three-year-olds and four-year-olds and enjoy Barbie the way mm -hmm. she's been passed on since yeah. 1941. I mean. How do you know that? I mean, I know, I know my facts. Albert definitely played with Barbies. <laughs> Is that real, 1941? 1941. And she's looked the same the whole time? That's it. How do you know that? Back check me. Check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh -uh. He's so serious. All right. All right. What's, uh, what are we doing? Another one? <laughs> um, does listening to an audiobook count as reading? I think so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say no on this. <laughs> Um, do you guys want to go first? I mean, 
I think that the point, I don't know, the point of reading for me is just like, you know, it's like therapeutic and like, you know, grow your knowledge and just like, just like something to do. So like, doesn't matter, like if you're just sitting, laying on the beach, listening to it, it's the same thing. You're getting all the same, Mm -hmm. you know, perks of it, in my opinion. The, pl- the point is to understand, like, the plot and the story, characters, what's going on. If I can sum up the book for you by listening to it, I don't, I don't really see a difference. For me, my attention span is so bad, I can't physically sit down and open a book and read. Like, I get so bored yeah. so quickly. And also, even if the story is really interesting, there's only been one book I've ever liked, and it's, we had to read it in class, and it was The Crucible. That was the only book I ever enjoyed. But everything else even in class i'm sitting there and i'm just like oh my god like i, I can't sit here and look at this book when i'm listening to an audio book you can kind of like multitask a little bit too like i yeah. can lay in my bath and like chill and just listen yeah. i can go in a tanning bed and listen i can drive it's like a podcast yeah i mean so to go off of that um that's why i i think uh, listening to an audio book is not the same as a book because people are multitasking they're not absorbing the book and reading the book. I mean, me personally, I, I have a, about an hour commute to work, um, so I started picking up on audiobooks. But after finishing two, I said to myself, I'm like, I don't know. I don't feel like I felt different reading it. I don't know why. I can't explain why. I think also when you have an audiobook, you're, you're kind of distracted. I'm not going to lie. I was sitting in traffic a little bit, and I'd get a little distracted, and yeah. I would scroll off a little bit, no, get back yeah. to it. I feel like when you read it, you have to physically be in the book and then read each word. I don't know if there's data behind it. If, if you're reading, Again, if you are like, you smarter if you actually read it than listen to it? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like, I think it's like in the mindset too. Like you just feel. I'll tell you what though. I Listening to an audio book and finishing it, I, feel, I felt more accomplished reading a book. Mm. When, I, when I was done reading it, I, it just felt more, I felt more accomplished reading it. I guess maybe because you could also like emphasize how you want to emphasize and read how you want right. to read and, the, and the, at the pace you want to read it like reading um, in my head like like all the emotions and stuff yeah. but then like sometimes the people on the audiobooks they're like and then so and so went to the store and it's like oh my god you couldn't yeah. be any more boring i think if if they like read but they were putting like emotion behind it it would be like much more interesting personally i do neither listen to audiobooks I don't read but for me it's just like thinking about just having to sit down and doing nothing other than focusing on what I'm reading I can't I'm so bad I I I don't like the summer book reports my mom would have to force me in my room take my phone take my remote so I had nothing else to do or else she'd walk in and I'd be on my phone but let me ask you guys a question do you would you feel more accomplished reading a full book or listening to an audiobook or does it matter you're right I would feel more accomplished reading yeah, because you do it at your own pace, too, and you feel like, you know, if you finish a book in, like, a week or two, as opposed to just, like, having an audiobook on play as you're, like, doing other things. Yeah. You know? I don't know. So maybe I take mine back. I so I know. just made you switch your... Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know. You might have done a reverse over here. Interesting. I mean, I feel like in a... W- I don't know. Like, I feel like in a way it's the same, but in a different way, like, it's not the same at all. Like also when you think about little kids, like that they need to learn how to read. Yeah. So if we're not talking about ages, yeah, the kids need to learn how to read and complete sentences and learn the words and how to talk and read with yeah. expressions when you know, when there's an explanation point at the end of the sentence or if there's a comma or semicolon, like they have to learn all that. Yeah. So they have to read to learn and they can't do that off of an uh, audio book. I, I think it just what we were going back to what you were saying, I mean, when, you're, when, when you have an audio book, you have your headphones in, you can go clean, you can go, you can do so many different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when you say, I wanna go read these four chapters, and let's say you just go in your room, you turn your nightlight on, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. you're buried into that book. Yeah. And if it gets good, you keep going, and it's just you and the book and your nightlight and your bookmark. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. chilling and, you know. You're not like distracted. You're not distracted. Um, I don't know. I, I think we should find, there has to be some, 
I wonder if there's any research behind it. Yeah. Like um, the, the benefits of reading instead of um, listening. listening to the book. Yeah. There's definitely some facts about it. The worst is it was in school when they would do the audiobooks, but they'd make you read along with it. Oh, yeah. It's like, what's the point? Like, I'd rather listen to you read it than the, the stupid audio of someone like, nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. So monotone, so boring, I'd find myself just going like this, like, a whole time. Yeah, I'd rather, like, you know what actually helped? When you'd go around the room and they'd call on different people. Oh, like popcorn. Oh, yeah, because you had to be paying attention because it was embarrassing mm -hmm. if they called on you and you didn't know where you were in oh, the book. Oh, that was bad. So, uh -huh. I don't know. All right. I have really bad ADD, so reading for me is, <laughs> no. I just have, like, yeah, an attention span of a squirrel, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. Uh, my favorite book is Judy Moody. Like, Judy actually, Moody. What is my favorite book? So. Junie B. Jones. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah my no. favorite. It's like, what is my favorite? Only so. ever liked The Crucible. The Great Gatsby wasn't terrible, too. Oh, God. I can't even imagine It wasn't that. that bad. Like, how do people read Harry Potter books? Oh, goodbye. No, I don't. Nah, I don't get no, no disrespect to you, Harry it's Potter so readers. It's so big but and so many. Like this big, how do you, there's movies on all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe, stop, just watch the movies. Mm -hmm. At that point, like that's for me, if it comes between reading the book and watching the movie. Oh, I'm watching I'm the watching movie. I'm watching the movie. I don't even like movies. That's why in schools they try so hard not to assign books that have movies. Yeah. Cause you're just gonna go find the movie. Mm -hmm. It's true. So. Some of you short kings out there might be very ah, upset about this next me. topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's considered short really quick, though? It, see, Can we give the height out? That's what, what we're going to okay. get into. It, it For depends. Guys, it depends. So under 5'5". Five five. We are going to discuss, can a woman <laughs> date a man shorter than her? Can a woman? I mean, yeah, I mean would a woman? Uh, would a woman yeah. date a man shorter than her? Yeah, like, like they can. Like, yeah, yeah. It's their choice. Should she? Should she? I'm gonna let you two go after this one and then I'll... Okay. Uh... Here's, here's how I think <laughs> of it. The man can be shorter than the women. Here are the rules. One, they cannot be significantly shorter. You know, cause what if I wanna wear high heels and I'm all the way up here and you're all the way down. If I can use you as an armrest, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Number two, if the woman is extremely tall, so if I'm six foot, I'm not gonna date a man 5'2". I'll maybe date a man 5'8", 5'9", maybe 5'10". But to me, like to some girls, he's, that guy's tall. For me, he's shorter than me, but it, we're both still tall. You know what I mean? So I think it depends on the height of the female and how it just looks. It just, it looks so weird it when the girl weird. is taller. You just don't wanna be that couple that everyone's staring at and talking about. It, so let me ask you guys a question. If this man that's 5'3", when does he use the, the height 5'3"? You find out, you guys meet, whatever, he's into you, and you're just like, oh, he's 5'3", you know, I, I can't do this. He's 5'2", 5 5'3". 5 but then you find out his net worth is $4.7 million. He's in. He's in, <laughs> he's in now? Say less. <laughs> so now, does height matter? Well... No. I'll take a short sugar daddy. I don't, there's sure. no height preference on he's that. He's not your sugar daddy. He's like your husband. Oh. So you think this five no. foot two king, um, as long as he is, his, his pockets are heavy, then it, it might change the outlook. Would you date a, a You have to make man? it worth it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You have to make it worth it. Like you can't have empty pockets and be five two. Nobody wants that. <laughs> but. So five foot two school teacher, probably you're going to pass. Yeah. God. Yeah. Probably. I'm 5'2", so like I never had this problem because every guy I met is taller than is me. Is taller than me. I do, so, know, so I do know girls that are pretty tall and they, they're, they will not date anyone within an inch shorter than them. I guess to switch the perspective, I'm a male, 5'7 uh, and a half to be exact. <laughs> um, when you're short, you gotta get and the a half. half. Closer get to the five, half. I say 5'8". Five, um, <laughs> Rounding up. I would never, ever <laughs> date a, a female five eight or taller i mean probably my fiance i think she's five three five three maybe five three yeah um you have to be for me it was under five 
six. It's like five intimidating. Months. You guys have right? preferences too. Yeah, I mean, well, f as a male, I'm not gonna be looking up to yeah. my, yeah. you know, I I'm not gonna give my girl a kiss and I'm looking up to her. Like, and, not, and then not only that, like when you're when you're the woman and you're taller than your man, they have so many rules for you. Like you can't wear this and you yes. can't wear that and like no one's telling me I can't wear high heels. Yeah, or like the man has so many rules. Like whatever, it just doesn't. This reminds me of a time during my very brief month being single in college and I had a Tinder, never like used it or anything. It was just kind of like, you know, a confidence <laughs> booster. So I was like messaging this guy and from his pictures, he looked really attractive. You know, nothing, you know, caught, you know, nothing turned me away at first. So he was like, do you want to hang out like on Wednesday? I was like, oh, you know, okay. Like, why not? He went to my school. I was like, okay, maybe this is safe. And I was telling one of my friends about it, and he was like, well, you know, don't you? I'm like, no, what? Like, I'm thinking this kid, like, killed his mom or something. Like, you know, don't you? And I'm like, what? He's like, he's four foot eight. Whoa. I was like, no, you're joking. He showed me a picture of the two of them. Now, my friend was, like, my height. Literally, like, right here on him, below his shoulder. I was like... Yeah. And I've never felt more shallow in my entire life because the only thing now stopping me from hanging out with him was the fact that he was 4'8". So I messaged him and I was just like, hey, like, I have a really busy schedule on Wednesday, like homework and stuff. He responds back and he goes, if you found out my height, you don't have to lie. Oh, that's so sad. I felt so bad. So, but like, that's a legal Four, eight. I think that was little a person. Like that's you can get a legit. handicap sticker being that height. <laughs> Judge me if you will, but ladies, oh, I know you would have done the same thing. <laughs> no, I, I think also, that's a midget for a male. That is a midget. For, for it a, is for a male, yeah. even for women. No. Even for, no, woman, the lead, no, I think women's a, under yeah. four eleven. You can get a handicap sticker. Yeah, hmm. you can park in the handicap spot. I'm not dating somebody with a handicap sticker for being short. You're not even handicapped in like a cool way. I mean, <laughs> I, cool I mean, way. like you didn't, you know, like you weren't in like a really cool skating accident. Like you, you're paralyzed, and you're now you you need a handicap sticker. No, you're just short. <laughs> like what? I mean, I, I think also as a woman, you guys can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Like you want your male to be a little bit taller, just to feel yeah, like, yeah. like Stevie. He, he's such a strong yeah, big like male, and nice he'll protect you from like anything. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He'll protect you, you know. Albert's yeah. actually the one dating Stevie. If you guys, <laughs> you guys didn't know yet. <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, but no, exactly. And like my thing is, is that like I hate being short. I hate mm -hmm. it. So I want to be with a man who's tall so my children have a chance to be over 5'5". Five five. Yeah. Like my dream is to be 5'5". Five five. So I'm 5'2", Stevie's 6 foot. So there's a chance when if we have children, my kids will be 5'5". Five five. And what if we need something out of the cabinet and we're both short? We're screwed. We're screwed. You need extra ladders in your house. A ladder, you're gonna have to stand on a chair, stool. hanging lights up and stuff. It's just it's inconvenient for everybody, you know? <laughs> heights, heights, big thing for males too. You, you wanna- No, yeah, that's, it's like- It's unfortunate if you're not the height that you- Well, it's yeah. a superiority complex too. The man doesn't wanna be shorter than the woman because then he feels- Short. Shorter. And like, I think we're also talking, I mean, listen, I, I, I don't know the exact height, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with my five, seven and a half. Would I love to be 5'10"? Of course. I mean, <laughs> changes the ball game a little bit. But um, I think maybe for male under 5'5", five, five, I think that's maybe where it gets a little yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot, there's girls that aren't that tall. Like, there's more short girls than tall girls, yeah. I feel like. So it's hard to find someone Would you guys agree that you? a lot of the, the women would range from 5' foot to 5'5", five, five, right? In that yeah. range, yeah. majority, I guess? Like, yeah. So like not like as a male like if you're un like if you're short like you have to, it's like you have to find somebody but then you have to find someone shorter than you like you know so it makes it yeah. even harder. Or we might be just speaking for maybe there are just some people that don't care but I guess maybe we might be speaking in general. Yeah, for some, some people, people don't care. It's more about like the personality like oh if I click with the person he could be three foot seven for all someone can care but for me I'm shallow the looks yeah. are. And big so, part of it too. So I'm like really into 90 Day Fiance. I'm not sure if anybody knows about it, but so I'm watching it, and on right now is a guy who literally I think is like six foot tall, and he's the, and he just met up with a midget. Like she's like not even a midget. She's like a midget midget. Like oh, like a like, like literally like he carries her, like picks her up. 
Wow. Like a baby. So it's just like, like that. I don't know. It depends. But just for the record, though, um, you guys said that if he is, let's say, 5'2", mm -hmm. um, and you guys meet up, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this guy has a, a nice yacht. Um, he's about to go buy himself a plane. Um, he lives in a $4 million home in, you know, wherever. Um, does that change everything? I mean, are you, uh, are you contemplating it now? Like, like, you know, he's short, but maybe we no, can work on I, it? Like, like I said, I would never date someone shorter than me personally. But if they're, if I'm 5'2", and if they're 5'2", I would date them. Mm -hmm. no, money or no money, I would date them. If I'm 5'10", and he's 5'2", yeah. I don't know. You may need to buy me my own yacht. So how tall are you? How tall are you? Five two. I'm five. five two and a half, I think. All right. So if somebody's, if you find the male that's five foot and he's loaded. No. No. Okay. I don't know. You'd have to be really, really good looking too. Like if you were short, but you were like Ass. Channing Tatum hot, like there, there may be a chance and you're loaded with money. You're working your way up my totem pole. But if you are not really, if you're like in the okay, like, oh, he's cute, but nobody I'd like, yeah. you know, risk it all for. I don't know. Right. I don't know. All right, all right. next. <laughs> yeah, oh. men stronger than women. This is gonna piss some people off. Uh, go ahead. Men so. are stronger physically. Yes. But not mentally or emotionally. Yes. Men, gent like, Normal biology, science-wise, are built to be stronger than us mm -hmm. because of their testosterone. However, mentally, we run circles around you. Hmm. Interesting. Not like we're smarter than you. We're yeah. just, we can handle more emotionally. And like, you know, like we give birth. We're mothers, like different things like that. I personally can't handle shit emotionally, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean that's where I was gonna go. I mean the the, I mean I just feel like ah oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Let me just uh, think before I speak here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know. I just think like there's nothing like a woman can beat a man in like a lifting contest. There's nothing like if she trains hard enough, you compare like Ronda Rousey and you put her next to like. I don't know, think of like a scrawny male. Ronda Rousey and Pete Davidson in a boxing ring. Who do you think's gonna win? Ronda Rousey, why? Because she trains and she works for it. And she's brought herself to that point. If you put me in a room with, I don't know, Anke, who do you think's gonna win? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think I, I, like if Pete Davidson had enough time to train, I think he'll beat Ronda Rousey. I could be stretching this, but I, I, you could be yeah. stretching. Um, we're very, I, mean, I think obviously very scientifically thin. speaking, very we thin. all know men are stronger just because of how science works. Testosterone. Um, I mean, there's a reason why. In general, I mean, just to go look at it from a sports perspective. That they do you, play. Who goes yeah. to WNBA games to watch women play basketball? This is not a shot at women. They're amazing, but. Yeah. Um, they're not stronger, they're not bigger, they're not faster. Faster, yeah. So, I mean, I'm just looking at it from a sports perspective. Yeah. Um, you're not going to see women play slow pitch softball or fast, you know what I mean? You're going to go see men throw 92 mile per hour yeah. sliders. Yeah. Um, so, looking at it from that perspective, men, I think, are just born naturally stronger. Yeah. There are probably some women that are stronger than men in In, in some categories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, like, when people say, like, oh, well, women should be able to play football with men. No. You're being tackled at, like... God knows how many miles per hour. Mm -hmm. They are physically triple your size. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get hurt. Mm -hmm. It's that, not a matter of like, they're better than you. They can do more than you can. It's not that. It's just about your safety. The, see, the people that are in the comment section that are saying that, you know, this is a, what an equal world men should be able to do. They don't realize that there's people in the NFL lining up that are six foot nine, six foot 10. Yeah. 340 pounds and are running faster than majority of the average Americans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wow, geez. Yeah, that's, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a, it's tough to say that um, women can play in the NFL. I yeah. mean, if you want to let them audition, not audition, it's sports, try out, by all means, there's no harm in letting them try out, but there shouldn't be like, oh, I'm not on the team because I'm a woman. No, you're not on the team because you couldn't tackle anybody. Yeah. That's why. I think it just definitely depends on the situation and who you are and everything like that. But in general, I but guess women are not stronger than men. I think, yeah, I don't think so. I think men are just a little softer inside as well. Mm -hmm. 
personal. And let's go back to this mentally part. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought women, um, they're kind of up and down sometimes, the hormones. Hormones, yeah. You guys it's have that thing once a month, right, where your your, your body goes a little crazy, right, thing. the period? Well, yeah. that's why I think we are stronger emotionally because we're constantly put through more. Yeah. So we handle a lot of shit. Like, we come to work, you wouldn't know we're on our menstrual cycles because we're not displaying it. Yeah. We're shoving it in, knowing how we're actually feeling, but we're just going to still go about our day as if nothing's wrong. Inside my head, I'm... You want to die I want to die. I'm screaming. My, there's cramps going on, you know, the whole mm -hmm. thing. But we still show up and we do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So that I think that makes us, like, mentally strong. We're prepared to handle more, yeah, I think. I mean, and you guys give birth, which is... Yeah. The greatest thing, yeah. you know. We haven't given do. birth yet. No, no, no. Of us. You guys <laughs> but, uh, you know, in general, you know, even seeing my fiance give birth was, you got you to give it up. You it's, realize it's, a uh, lot yeah. after you watch the person you love push out a child through their, you know, hoo ha. <laughs> and you're like, damn, you think to yourself, like, I could never do that. Yeah. You're right. You can't. <laughs> you see all those challenges that the wives like put the watermelon on yes. the husband and and they they quit within the hour. Yeah, we well, do that I for mean, nine months. I mean, listen, I want to I want to talk about that part. I get that sometimes too. They'll be like, well, you know, you you don't have to give birth, but I, I don't, you don't have, have a the, choice. I don't no. have yeah. the choice to you're give right. birth. You're right. They, Some men would do it if they if they could. Uh, it, my, our body, biologically, scientifically, when when whoever created us, when God created us. You notice how the vagina is formed perfectly to give out the child. Yeah. I, that's the reason for that. No, you're right. We're not made to give. You're right. I don't think women head. should like hold that against men no. only, unless if, if a man like literally just says like, like it's nothing. You know, like yeah, like, talks down about it or like tries to make you like I don't know, like just says I, it's I'll nothing. I'll tell you what. I, I've seen contractions live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a different ball game. Oh, yeah. Um, is that it? Um, Did we have one? What? Oh, the college. Why are students thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt? Well, I guess you can, if you want to word it, uh, yeah. why are four year colleges, I guess, like, why, yeah, why, why are four year colleges so expensive if for we. For a regular degree or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then maybe the starting salary is so low. Yeah. If, why did I pay, probably total, $200,000 to go to school, but starting salary, you're gonna offer me maybe $30,000. And that's, that's, that's starting, but they want like three to five years of experience. Yeah. Every entry level job you search, they're like must have two years. From what? It's entry level. Yeah. I don't get it. But that, and it's like, I feel like college wastes your money too, because they put you in so many courses that you don't need. If I just took the classes I needed, I would have been done in two years. Mm -hmm. But it's the fact that you're making me take algebra, you're making me take an elective, you're making me take cooking, like st just things I don't need to take, and I'm paying for it. Yeah, and I'm never all, gonna use it. It's all a money scam. They force you to take classes that they don't need you to take. Yeah. Just to uh, th Those are, the, I think, you. the basic classes, and I think they input it into you when you're in high school. Yeah. In high yeah. school, the teacher's saying, are you ready, you know, college day, what college are you going to? Mm -hmm. I realized it when I went to uh, four-year school. I went to West Virginia University, and instead of I was paying twenty-five hundred dollars for Economics One Hundred and One, mm -hmm. where I could have went to a two-year school mm -hmm. and paid four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, same no, exactly. thing. But just to that's why I don't get when people shame like community college the first two years. It's like yeah. I'm just doing the basic classes I need, mm -hmm. and I'm spending maybe more than half. We're well, spending more than half less of what you're spending. Oh, exactly. So when I first got to school and I'm in like algebra and I think like writing or something like that, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I just learned all of this the last four years. Why am I relearning grammar? Why am I relearning where to place commas? I've been doing that since fourth grade. Yeah. I already know all this. It yeah. just doesn't make any sense. I, I, yeah. I guess it's to be like a refresher. Like you're these are just always things you're gonna or supposed to know. I, yeah. Half I the mean, things I learned, I, I don't know anymore. I, my son, I'm he's only ten months old, but I promise you, he's not gonna go straight to a four year college, especially no, if you don't know what no, you want to no. do. Knock out the two years, no. because I mean, even for me, from what I learned is I have a business marketing degree. If you ask me, you can put the marketing degrees, the business management degrees the communications degrees, all these four years degrees, put them in a circle, and they're all a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, I mean, in my all opinion. Bullshit. 
unless you're specializing in something and you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be an Speech engineer. Speech pathologist, like physical um, therapist, like something I could be, yeah, And I could be that. wrong because I graduated college in 2012 and I can tell you the marketing was off to where we are now in 2022, yeah. Yeah. where what they were telling us, they were just teaching us stuff in a textbook yeah. from 1984, how marketing was done then. Yep. So what do you really learn in, in school too? Oh, do you, exactly. I mean, you, you guys are younger than me. You guys just graduated college, what, a couple years ago? 2019. Do you go, 2019, do you, how much has that affected you into what you do now? Nothing. Nothing. Not really. Literally, I can't tell you one thing I learned in college. It's like actually disgusting. It's like right, disturbing see. how much I don't know from what I learned in college. Yeah. That's like my biggest piece of, of, a, of a, a little advice is to go to a two-year college mm -hmm. because I still don't know what I want to do with my life. I didn't know while I was in college. So I literally was just going and just paying out the ass yeah. for no reason. I was just going at college just to be at college. So I, I wish I went to a two-year school, figured out what I wanted to do, and then went to a bigger university to focus on that specific yeah. but you did the, major. But from what we've been taught as society, you did the right thing. No, exactly. Right? Exactly. You didn't want to be it's, that. It's person. poor. Your, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the mentality. And that's what our parents know too. They're like, yeah. oh, well, Madison, you're, you know, you're graduating high school. You mm -hmm. got to go to the college mm -hmm. before your college, get your degree. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah. And like literally everyone else around me did it. So I was like, I just have to follow what everyone else is doing. You it's know? the norm. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. But it's like at 18 years old, like, it shouldn't be normal. Like no. I shouldn't know what I want to do it for the rest of my life at 18 years old. I was like, still I raising my hand to go to the bathroom in high school at 18 yeah. years old. And now tomorrow I'm graduating and you expect me to know exactly what I want to do with the rest of my life. Yeah. It also starts from the top down too, because when you get out into the job searching, it's kind of like that entry, the barrier to entry, because it says minimum four year degree. Yeah. yeah. So that's it's, also why we're put into that, you know, we're pressured to, to get to that. It's impossible to get a job nowadays. It's impossible. It's ridiculous it's too. It's your ticket you could have, to even get the interview pretty much. Yeah. If it has to go from hiring someone over experience, over the degree, I feel like they look at the degree. Yeah. I could have five plus years of marketing experience, mm -hmm. but my degree doesn't reflect it. Like maybe I have an associates in marketing mm -hmm. instead of a bachelor's. And the first thing they're going to say is, why don't you have a bachelor's in marketing yeah, or exactly. communication? You know, it's crazy too. I was talking, I forgot I was talking to this, um, but I graduated 2012. I don't know where my degree is. Obviously, I can go to the archives and, and, and get it. I don't know where it is. And I was always wondering, what if I just made something up? What if you made something up and you, said, can, I, I was graduated? Say, can they look like into you and say, when, like, Haley doesn't have a Bachelor of Arts? Like, you know? Because yeah. we always, now we have a resume, we put it on a resume. Yeah. But what if you yeah. didn't actually get that diploma and you put it down? Very curious to see if, if people yeah, check that. Know. Maybe yeah. it depends on the field. Well, if you uh, get hired, they're going to catch you in your lie. I'm assuming. <laughs> well, yeah, it depends but again, on what you do. It depends on what you do yeah. because yeah. you could always just learn what you're doing at that job. Exactly. It's just like any other job. You just learn with experience, learn from just being there. Well, that's like in school. Like I had an interest in social media marketing, but I had to take like basic marketing. Like, like I had to learn like why yeah. things are priced a certain way, things like that. And I, that, that to me, I was just like, I don't want to do this. I yeah. want to do stuff with social media. So why can't I just focus on classes involving that? Why mm -hmm. do I have to focus on like Shark Tank marketing? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's what we all, that's all we did was watch Shark Tank. Yeah, it's not very, it's so and sad. that's another thing. The amount of movies I watched in college, it's like, oh yeah. Like I was in a history of television class. Like what, what I was watched, teaching me? I watched what The Princess and me? the Frog one time in college. I think it's just, we can really dive into this so deep because like who's even like, let's go to this route. Who's teaching these classes in college? Some of them are 55, 60 oh, year old yeah. male or females who are yeah. taught their way back mm -hmm. when they grew up. So how does it translate to this world? And it's tough, it, it's, it's hard. You know, if you're taking this marketing course and Professor Smith, who's 64, he's retiring in three years, he's teaching you marketing from 85, yeah. 90. Professor Smith doesn't know about marketing 101 now. He's not oh. teaching me social media marketing. No, he's no, no. teaching me like. And that's my, what you probably need to do, know right when you get out. Yeah. I, prof I had a bio class and my professor literally used, what is that thing called? Like where you put the clear screen on. Like, oh, oh my God. The what? writing thing? Yes, what is that? Oh, the, um, geez. I think I know oh. what you're you, you, It's like a projector, right? Yes. A projector, yeah. and he's writing on the yep. projector, and it's yes. on the... Yes, my teacher I, used that. I thought that was only the 90s. No, wow. in 2019. <laughs> we had chalkboards in my middle my school. My professor used that. Chalkboard. Well, chalkboards I thought was still... A no, I had chalkboards too. Yeah. You did? Yeah. When I would go to like dance class, I was the only one of my friends I knew that was in Catholic school. Everyone else I knew went to public school. And I would tell them like, oh, I got my name written on the chalkboard, because that's what happened when you were bad. Your name got written on the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. And they were like, did you say chalkboard? Yeah, chalkboard. They're like, oh. We have whiteboards. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, you're I'm, so cool. We had both, but we had chalkboards. You brought back memories with that projector. Yeah. They would put the, the yeah. piece of paper on yeah. and they would write yeah, on and it. Yeah, erase it and then you still saw the other stuff. Mm-hmm. It wasn't clear all the way and yep. I'm like, and his wow. handwriting the was hand- chicken scratch and I'm like, dude, their hand 2019 again, in. I can't. Their hand was always in yes. the screen too. So it's like, I can't read it because your big Ooh. hand is in my way. I'm not interested in this class, let alone, I literally have no idea what that says no. on the screen. So. It takes them like 10 minutes to set it up too. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. That Thank was. Thank you for coming to our podcast and we will see you guys soon. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Albert, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I had a lot of fun. (laughs)